Far Cry 6 is shaping up to be one of the most exciting open world games of 2021. It's got crazy characters, insane guns, it's set on a tropical island, and it has an unforgettable villain. By many accounts, this is the game fans have been wanting for years. I've spent the last week digging through every article, interview, and trailer to bring you 101 things you need to know about Far Cry 6. Far Cry 6 is an open-world action-adventure first-person shooter developed by Ubisoft Toronto. It's set to release October 7th this year on current and next-gen consoles, PC, Amazon Luna, and Google Stadia. In terms of performance, the new trailer during Xbox's E3 conference confirms the game will run at 4K 60fps on Xbox Series X. If you are a little bit worried like I was, it seems that consoles will get that next-gen bump, which we should also expect on PlayStation 5. Starting with the story, Anton Castillo rose to power on the promise of restoring Yara to its former glory, and he intends to do that by any means necessary. His 13-year-old son, Diego, is forced to follow in his footsteps as he shapes the future of his country. According to Giancarlo Esposito, who plays El Presidente, Anton is a leader trying to empower the people to understand that they need strong leadership but he finds himself in a revolution. Anton's father was a dictator too, so he wants to empower the people to take their country back. His plan is to isolate Yara from the rest of the world to protect it from foreign influence. During the Summer Game Fest show, Esposito claimed that Anton isn't really a villain. It's hard to judge whether this is just his artistic interpretation or some clever marketing, but it's safe to expect Anton to be more complex than he seems on the surface. He's also grooming Diego to be his successor and continue his legacy of ruling Yara. Diego seems to be at the center of this story in a way that may not be obvious just yet. Pretty much everything Yubi has said about this story is that Diego is unsure about his future, so perhaps we the player will be able to influence the future of Yara through how we interact with Diego and perhaps how we even treat Anton. Yara is a fictional island off the coast of the US in the Caribbean. After decades of economic sanctions, the country is left impoverished and its people divided. Some Yarens follow Anton blindly, while others are subjugated to his reign. Tensions boil over to the point that it sparks a guerrilla revolution. This is where the player comes in. We play as Danny Rojas, a local Yaren who really didn't want to get involved in the revolution. We had plans to leave Yara until we witness Anton's brutality firsthand. That's when we decide to join Libertad, which is the guerrilla faction aiming to take down Anton Castillo. For the first time in the series, Danny can be played as male or female. This is a choice that you make at the very start of the game, similar to a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey. After Far Cry 5's silent protagonist, Ubisoft is going back to a fully voiced character and we're actually seeing our character on screen in third person. For narrative director Navid Kavari, it was essential that our player character has a personal investment in this revolution. They needed to have a voice in this game. This reminds me of Far Cry 3 and how Jason Brody's voice was essential to his journey. All we know about our protagonist is Danny's a military dropout turned guerrilla revolutionary. So theoretically, Danny has all the military expertise, the experience to be able to mow down Anton forces and take back Yara. Over the course of the story, we'll meet a bizarre cast of characters like we expect. The first is Juan Cortez, who narrates one of the trailers, and he seems to be our main weapons expert. He's a jaded ex-KGB spy who specializes in the Resolver philosophy. We see him sort of egging on Anton in one of the newest trailers for the game, so it's safe to say that they have some old issues that need to be resolved. Speaking of, Resolver is the philosophy of using what you have to make what you need. After decades of sanctions, Yarens have been forced to make do and adopt this idea of reusing and repurposing. So as the player, we'll get to see this in the form of weapons, vehicles, and even our animal companion. And we'll get into all of that specifically later in the video. The only other major character we know of so far is Clara Garcia. She is the leader of the resistance group Libertad, so 
She's going to be a main player in this story. There's also this guy who, again, we don't know his name, but he appears a lot in the footage we have so far. Naveed says the game's story is heavily inspired by the Cuban Revolution, which Ubisoft used to research and form the basis for fighting back against Castilla. This revolution also inspired the look of Yara, which mixes vintage cars with modern weapons to develop a sort of timeless look. In terms of story structure, world director Ben Hall says players have a lot of choice when it comes to experiencing this narrative. Who you speak to and in what order is up to you which opens many different paths for how the game will play out. Naveed says you're given the freedom to explore at your own pace, but there's also cutscenes for Anton and Diego when Danny isn't there. This is to make sure that the player also sees their perspective of the revolution. Lead gameplay designer David Grivel elaborated further on the story design saying the player can tackle missions in almost any order that we want. We can start anywhere in the world, talk to anyone, and do missions however we like. UB is trying its best to be as open as possible because player agency is absolutely key. Naveed also came out and said Far Cry 6 is political by nature, saying a story about a modern revolution must be. While it doesn't try to say anything specific about modern day Cuba, he wanted this story to be about the conditions that lead to the rise of fascism in a nation. The costs of imperialism, forced labor, the need for free and fair elections, LGBTQ plus rights, and more. Far Cry has always been a first-person shooter, and that's exactly what you can expect from this game. This franchise has always offered a blend of genres, so you'll find there's attention given to the chaotic, you know, shooting action, but also the stealth. But for the former, they're taking it up a notch because this is the biggest arsenal we've seen in a Far Cry game yet. There will be over 100 different weapons to play around with, 49 of which are a military-grade arm. We've seen dozens of weapons in trailers already, but players can expect classics like the combat bow to return, as well as sniper rifles. Some highlights for me are the heavy machine guns used for larger battles against tanks, and the AK-47, which is something you expect, but hey, it's nice to see it in action. In the Xbox trailer, we get to see this harpoon gun, which pins enemies to walls. There's also a grenade explosive looking launcher gun in addition to this really cool looking dual scoped assault rifle. If it was ever in question, there's plenty of variety going on with the arsenal in this game. Let's talk about fangs for hire. Far Cry 6 is ditching guns for hire, meaning that there's going to be no human companions. Instead, the system is called Amigos, and you can call on a roster of crazy animals to help you in battle. It's not like you'll be alone though. UB has said there will be resistance fighters to back you up in combat at specific moments, but you can't call them into battle like previous games. Here are the amigos that we know of so far. First is Chorizo, the tiny wiener dog who seems to actually distract guards with his cuteness instead of killing them. This can be used in stealth situations where you can pass by without killing anyone, or you can set them up for a takedown. Guapo is Juan's pet alligator, who you can sick onto enemies. He wears clothes, and he seems to be the kind of companion that you'd call in the middle of a fight to hold down enemies or just take them out. The newest one we've seen is a rooster with a spiky collar called Chicarone. Looks like this guy comes in to claw your enemies and yeah, just deal some real damage. In one of his videos, Raptor pointed out that it looks like there's a cyber dog coming in the season pass for the game, in addition to a giant cat in one of the special editions for the game. So it looks like what we've seen is not the end of the Amigos. And yeah, clearly Ubisoft is leaning into the ridiculous side of things with this one. In terms of enemy types, we've seen a lot of grunt looking soldiers throughout gameplay. I anticipate we'll see more variety soon, but you know, you see the heavies, which we've come to expect in the recent games, but also these shield type enemies that can lay down a shield and present another sort of navigation challenge in order to get around that. There's tons of throwables, Molotov cocktails, but this one in particular caught my eye. It's an EMP gadget, so you can throw it like a grenade in order to disable security cameras. Remember those brutal healing animations across these games? In one of the trailers, we see Danny lighting a cigar and burning herself to cauterize a wound. These always made my stomach turn in the other games, but it lends to the overall feel of a Far Cry game, so I'm glad to see it back.
If you've just seen what's been released so far, you might think there's no stealth in this game. So far, we haven't seen a ton of that footage, but there does seem to be that classic approach of letting the player choose how they want to tackle any situation. For example, one of the big new additions is that the player can blend into their environment by holstering Danny's gun. That allows us to pass through areas of Yara as a normal civilian. You can use this to pass behind enemy lines, for example, and sabotage enemy equipment. You can also do this for just more immersive reasons. We've been able to holster our weapon before, but hey, it makes sense for a guerrilla fighter to be able to blend in. But it also enables you to do more casual things like play dominoes and explore the city. Personally, I hope this makes the world feel more realized and reactive instead of a carnival where you're kind of running between activities. Pretty much all of the things you expect from stealth that you can do in previous games is here. So the first one is going to be throwing knives. These are completely silent and you can use these to take out enemies from a rain. You can use rocks to distract enemies away from an area or set them up for a takedown. Brutal stealth takedowns are back. Things like ledge assassinations and grenade assassinations. These are ready for stealth players with plenty of new animations. Brand new to the series is a wanted system. This is something you might recognize from Assassin's Creed with Notoriety or Red Dead or Grand Theft Auto. It's a metric that tracks your actions in the world. So the more chaos you cause, the faster enemies will detect you and attack. According to David, there's a point where Anton will send reinforcements to hunt you down if you've caused, you know, a certain amount of damage. But Yubi was quick to point out that you have control over this with your actions. So if you want this meter to go down, you can return to being completely incognito by being more stealthy. We talked about Resolver earlier and how it sort of plays into the story part of the game, but it is a huge part of gameplay. We don't know exactly how it works yet, but we can kind of assume from context clues that we're gonna go out into this world, scavenge for specific parts, and then bring them back to craft some insane things. In the last few games, all crafting has been done via menu. We don't know exactly how that works either in Far Cry 6. Personally, I'm kind of hoping that they overhaul it. Gameplay suggests so far that there might be a workbench to do crafting. And yeah, I hope so. That's a fun sort of in-world method that I always appreciate. We will use a similar kind of system for crafting attachments to existing weapons. There's a ton of focus on customization in general and that applies to non-resolver weapons too. There's about six or so resolver weapons we've been able to identify so far. So let's take a look starting with El Pequeño. This is a Gatling gun made using a motorcycle engine. It looks insane. El Susuro is a nail gun that can be used in stealth. So you get more options with that gun too. Discos Locos is the disc launcher returning from New Dawn. And yeah, everyone saw this in the gameplay reveal. It plays Macarena and apparently some more music that you can unlock in the game. Of course, the flamethrower is back. It wouldn't be a Far Cry game without a flamethrower. So you can expect that again. I caught a small bit of gameplay that showed off this fireworks gun and it looks like it can be used to take down Anton's vehicles, in this case, a helicopter. Then there's this battery energy gun. We still don't know what this thing does, but it fits in with every other weapon in this game. Yubi took their resolver philosophy and created a new gameplay mechanic with the backpacks. These are called Supremo backpacks, and we know that they're built by our friend Juan Cortez. And I'd assume this operates like a special ability, but yeah, we don't know how it works yet. Are these going to have certain charges that recharge over time? Are we going to have to go out and scavenge for parts to rebuild our backpacks after we use them? It remains to be seen how these work. But we do know of three of them so far. First is the Exterminador. This one shoots a ton of fireworks at enemies and is powerful enough to blow up a tank. Furioso is the fire one. This lifts you off the ground and torches everyone around you in sort of an AoE attack. And then Fuego gives you kind of like a double jump. This is a burst that lets you traverse the world a little bit differently. Customization extends outside of just weapons too. And this information comes via Joraptor on his channel. He interviewed a developer that confirmed there will be player gear in this game with perks and stats that affect gameplay. This is just one of the ways that Far Cry New Dawn is influencing the next game in the series with, you know, more stats and RPG stuff. We got a few examples of how these equipment bonuses are going to work. 
For example, there are gloves that will make throwing knives unmissable. There's going to be headgear that gives you improved headshot damage. Similarly, you'll find pants that improve your stealth and shoes that improve your mobility. However, don't expect this to be too much of an RPG because we learned from game director Alex Latendre that this game is not going to have a tier system like Far Cry New Dawn. He said that that idea didn't fit the fantasy of this world. I'm happy to hear that because that's something that does break the fantasy for me. We really don't know much about skill trees yet. Far Cry has always had a method of earning points and experience and unlocking new abilities and items, so I assume we'll see that at some point before launch. For the first time, we get third person sections in Far Cry 6. Like we talked about earlier, there are story beats, but also in gameplay. Danny can walk around guerrilla camps and interact with characters and the environment. It's also there to show off the visual customization since we'll be able to choose everything from our backpack to our clothes. This made me happy because we don't want another cyberpunk situation where you're getting to choose what you're wearing, but you never get to see it unless you're in a vehicle, right? Once you leave a guerrilla camp in Far Cry 6, the camera will zoom back into first person mode seamlessly. And the other time that we know about that we'll see Danny in third person is when we're using the backpacks, which we've seen in a lot of the gameplay that's been released so far. Another core part of Far Cry is the vehicles, and it really feels like we have a unique mix this time around. We have the classic cars we talked about because of Yara's setting. They don't have access to newer vehicles, so these are sort of fixed up versions of classic cars, and they look really cool. But there's a lot more outside of that, and from what we've seen so far, you have rally cars for off-road, giant trucks that, you know, Yaren guards drive around. Also some sports cars if you want to go really fast. But then there's some smaller, more utility options like an ATV and even horses. That's something I didn't expect, but that's going to be really cool. There's even goofier options like tractors. Now we haven't seen whether we can drive these, but Far Cry just seems like a game where you could hop in a tractor and drive around. On the crazier side of things, you also have boats, airplanes, and of course, you can even drive tanks. Some vehicles look to be fully customizable with armor for more protection, turrets for extra firepower, and shovels on the front for ramming. Also, you can add some nitrous for even more speed. The craziest thing we've seen so far is that you can add a parachute to your dune buggy and launch yourself into the air and float around. So. It just looks like the focus is on fun. One more detail before we move on in a developer AMA, Alex told us that you can't just roll around in tanks the entire game. That would be overpowered, right? You can try, but there's some sort of limitation there. If I had to guess, maybe it's Anton's military has a lot of tricks to just get you out of tanks, some explosives perhaps, or there's just an ammo limitation. You don't have unlimited missiles. Let's talk more about Yara. Ubisoft says this is the most expansive Far Cry playground to date, allowing us to explore a variety of environments, including jungles, beaches, and decaying urban landscapes. Also for the first time in a Far Cry game, the entire island will be explorable. To pull off the largest open world in Far Cry history, they focused on creating landmarks and points of interest. We'll see things that you expect in cities, like airports, for example. This game has a greater sense of infrastructure you'd expect in a real world. Instead of giving us 10 camps in the forest that all look the same, David says the team focused on what you might expect in a real place. Sawmills, for example, will look like sawmills. Ports will have boats. We'll have to see exactly how they managed to pull this off and I hope it leads to some impressive environmental storytelling that makes me feel like I'm in a real place. How big is the world? David says the island itself is bigger than any map UB has ever done, but he also says that doesn't mean anything if it's empty. There's going to be plenty of content and quote, the right content too. He went further on to say that the game isn't all about guerrilla warfare. UB wanted to make sure that when you're in the open, you can go fishing for a bit. You can go on a hunt. This game will offer those quieter moments in addition to the louder ones. Ben says UB Toronto wanted the player to feel like they're exploring an entire country, not just a single region. We should expect a mix of luscious biomes and urban environments in decay. There's a strong contrast between the beauty of this nation 
and the urban environment, which will be dense and relatively new to the Far Cry experience. In terms of density, Ben is referring to the city of Esperanza. This is the capital of Yara where Anton rules. We haven't had a true fully fledged city in this series yet because we're mostly in developing countries. This is the heart of the conflict and it's incredibly dangerous for players. But I'm hoping UB really invests in impressing us with this city because dense, highly detailed cities are some of my favorite parts of any game. More on the city, David says Esperanza is under lockdown. It's heavily controlled by the military unlike any other part of the island. It's full of elite troops patrolling the streets. There's parts of this city where anyone seen there is pretty much shot on sight. After reading this quote, I remember there's a small section of gameplay where we've seen Danny dressed as one of Anton's guards. So perhaps we'll have to grab a disguise in order to navigate some of these areas. Maybe this is just one set piece for a mission, but it could even be part of the notoriety mechanic. We'll have to see. Filling the world with fun things to do is so important in a Far Cry game, and open world activities in Far Cry 6 are no different. FMD bases are returning. These are the classic outposts that you've seen in every single Far Cry game. And we already know that we'll be able to recapture these outposts after a certain point, similar to previous games. We'll also have something similar to radio towers like in previous games, but Hopefully, there are good incentives for capturing these. I always appreciated how Far Cry 3 gave you free weapons for taking the time to unlock them. One of the new activities you can expect is flak cannons. These are Anton's anti-air weapons that exist out in the world. So if you want to fly in certain areas of the map, you're going to have to go on foot to take these down in order to fly safely so you're not shot down. Checkpoints are also new, and it's kind of the same idea, but on land. This is where Anton's men will stop and check to see if you're a member of Libertad. You can blend in as a civilian by holstering in order to pass through, or you can navigate around these entirely to avoid them. But wiping them off the map will make traversing in vehicles much easier. One of the activities that's rooted in the narrative in the story, I guess, is guerrilla paths. These are hidden from past revolutions. They lead you to shortcuts to maybe get around checkpoints, for example, but they also hold valuable intel and loot. In some of the gameplay we've seen, Danny actually takes out a phone and follows a map in order to find one of these guerrilla paths. Every game in the series has hunting and Far Cry 6 is no different. According to Alex, wildlife is very important in this game and it can be hunted and used in trading to get what you want. So it sounds like it'll be very similar to recent games. We briefly talked about dominoes before. That's one of the more leisure activities, but expect some crazier stuff like the wingsuit challenges in Far Cry 5, because again, this is a Far Cry game. In sad news for some fans, arcade mode will not return in 6. Alex says they chose to focus their efforts on the campaign instead, and this will upset people, but yeah, at least we're not surprised on launch, and hopefully this means the main game is going to feel more polished. In terms of getting from activity to activity, the wingsuit and grappling hook are returning. And we know that the wingsuit is going to be difficult to get. During an AMA, UB said it won't be handed to us on a plate. So it sounds like we'll have to earn it via a mission or maybe through the skill tree. Another returning feature, Far Cry 6 is fully playable in co-op mode. It's going to feature the same tether system that we've had in the last few games. And if you're not familiar, Far Cry 5 and New Dawn made it to where you have to stay close to your teammate at all times. So if you were kind of hoping for maybe like a GTA Online or a Red Dead Online experience, that's not going to happen. You can't explore entirely different parts of the map. But Alex says it's simple, easy to use, and we're going to see more about it soon. A lot of what you're going to be doing in Far Cry 6 interacts with itself. So it sounds like there's a lot of variability where you can set off a chain reaction of events. Perhaps you can just mainline the story and finish the game relatively quickly, but if you really allow yourself to get immersed in the world, it will take you on crazy rides. Another detail I picked up from a Jor Raptor interview is that there's something special that's gonna happen after the main story, and this will set up the world to offer something new that you didn't have before. The whole purpose of that is to keep you playing. It's supposed to give players more to do after the end of the game, so the world won't be empty when you're done and you're not just resetting outposts that you've already captured. This makes sense given Yubi's recent trends of giving their games a long tail, but 
This is great too, because we know the game's DLC is focusing on villains from the previous games. Both players and the developer want there to be fun things to do after the game is over. So hopefully whatever they have planned does that. During the AMA, UB was asked if the game is going to continue the end of the world apocalypse storyline from Five and New Dawn. Navid said there are loose connections between games in this series, but they really wanted to focus on the story of Yara and its revolution. If you're wondering how long this game's been in production, Far Cry 6 has been ongoing since 2016 with Ubisoft Toronto as the lead studio. We know that UB likes to pool all of its resources across its many studios, so there are many different hands lent to this project. Also during a dev AMA, we learned that Herc is not returning in this game. He's been in so many games over the years, but this time they're focusing entirely on characters within Yara. The composer behind the game's soundtrack is Pedro Bromfman, who has worked on games before, but most notably, he made the score for Narcos, which if you watched it on Netflix, that's kind of the perfect fit for a Far Cry game. If you're wondering about last generation versions of this game, Ubisoft is making sure that it will be viable for Far Cry 6. According to them, the game looks and runs fine on both previous and next generation consoles. They've said they're not abandoning players who want to play on Xbox One and PS4. And yeah, that's kind of a take their word for it thing. We'll have to see when the game actually comes out. If you're playing this game on PlayStation 5, Alex says DualSense owners will be happy. The game will feature adaptive triggers and haptic feedback to experience some of the more subtle parts of Yara. Like I said before, that makes me want to grab the game on PlayStation 5 because guns just feel better. It's time to dive into the extra content on this game. First off is pre-order. If you pre-order the game, you get the Discos Locos Deadly Disc Launcher and the Libertad Chorizo skin for your Amigo. The season pass for Far Cry 6 is doing something a little bit different. It's actually not directly like a follow-up of the game. It's become the villain. You have three separate DLC episodes where you get to play as three villains from the series, Voss Montenegro, Pagan Min, and Joseph Seed. Also within the season pass is a classic edition of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon, which if you're on PC, this isn't gonna do much. It's not really a remake. It's essentially just a next-gen version of that game. On top of that, you'll get the Blood Dragon pack that you can use in Far Cry 6. The gold edition of the game is basically just the game bundled with the season pass. So you get the base game plus everything that I just mentioned with that season pass. If you grab the ultimate edition of the game, you get everything that you got in the gold plus the ultimate pack, which includes Croc Hunter, Vice, and Jungle Expedition packs. These look like mostly cosmetic things, but you can also see there's a big cat in the Vice pack. Finally, if you really want to dive in, you can grab the collector's edition of the game. And this includes everything I mentioned, plus a physical, like actual flamethrower, if you've got room for that. But yeah, stuff like Steelbook, game soundtrack, uh, chorizo key ring, um, map, all kinds of stuff in this thing. I hope that gave you guys a ton of information, really everything you need to know to get excited for Far Cry 6 later this year. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please let me know by clicking the like button. I'm working on a 2021 review of Mass Effect 3, which I just finished in the Legendary Edition. So if that sounds like something you'd like to watch, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell to receive a live notification so you don't miss it. You can also follow me on social media. I'm JV on YT on Twitter and JV.YT on Instagram for updates on all of my content. If you want to chat more about games in general, join our community Discord server. Links for everything are in the description below. Big thanks to my YouTube members, Ultrafans Bill and Cam, Superfans Tipsy Sergey, Tarl K, and William. Fans Matthew, Spyro, Level 42, Blood Sky, and Kamal. And supporters Nos, Adam, Mr. Hollow, Quickness, Firkin, Jay, Sam, Abishek, Ferris, Report, Gabrielle, Abraham, John, Teo, and Sung for supporting the channel. If you want to support me further, click the join button below this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.